Shalom, shalom, shalom. I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University. I'll be your host this evening, Elder Lynn. My brothers and sisters, we'll be taking a look at part two of a teaching that I did week before last, which was entitled, No Remembrance of the Dead. This will be part two of the teaching. And the heading of this teaching, Remove Sorrow Far From Thee. Remove Sorrow Far From Thee. My brothers and sisters, as we were going through scripture on that teaching, No Remembrance of the Dead, it's clear that we have to separate ourselves from this flesh. It is a must that we do this. We have to understand that it's those little small things that's, that can get us in a real bad way with the Most High God if we're not paying attention to what it is that we're doing. We have to be obedient unto the Word of God. We have to do those things that's required of us. And we have to really keep our focus on what it is that we're doing as we're on this journey. We can't afford to allow those small things to get us caught up and to allow anyone to get us caught up telling us different things that are not re uh, that's not recorded here in the Word of God. So we need to keep our focus. We need to continually study our, to show ourselves approved and to continually add these things that we're learning unto our life because it is our life. Remove sorrow far from thee. So I hope you have your notebook, pad, ink, pen, and paper, and as always, most importantly, your Bible. And let's get started. So my brothers and sisters, we'll get started right here in Sirach to some Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 23, and it's recorded. Love thine own soul, and including comfort thy heart. Remove sorrow far from thee, for sorrow hath killed many, and including there is no profit therein. Exactly the point. So we see clearly at the beginning of this teaching with this text, sorrow has to be removed. We have to remove that from our heart because if we don't remove this sorrow from our heart, it's going to cause us a big problem on this journey. It is important that we understand that because grief and, and sorrow, all of these things play uh, a role in our, in our journey, my brothers and sisters. And as we discussed on that, uh, that teaching, No Remembrance of the Dead, we clearly understand that we all grieve differently. It's a process that we go through. But it's important that we separate ourselves from this flesh. We have to keep our focus because if we're not going to separate ourselves from this flesh, it's going to be that flesh that's going to be our downfall. I want you to clearly understand that. So let's reiterate this text again. So Rock chapter 30, verse 23. Love thine own soul and including comfort thy heart. Remove sorrow far from thee, for sorrow hath killed many and including there is no profit therein. From here, let's go to Sirach. Chapter 38 and verse 18. And it's recorded. For heaviness cometh death, and including the heaviness of the heart breaketh strength. Exactly the point. Because this sorrow, this grief has to be removed. Now, we understand, my, my brothers and sisters, that sorrow is going to increase on this journey but we have to understand it's going to be for bitterness why because it's things that we have to remove from this old way of living that we used to live and to allow the holy spirit to lead us back to the kingdom so all of these things that we have become used to all of these things that we have attached ourselves to that's totally 100% against the Most High God, we have to rid ourselves of that. We have to rid ourselves of that. It's important that we understand that. Sirach 38, 18, For of heaviness cometh death, 
exactly the point. And the heaviness of the heart breaketh strength. From here, let's go to 2 Corinthians and pull some information. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and let's sit right here at verse 10. And it's recorded. For the godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But however, the sorrow of the world worketh death. Exactly the point. That's why we have to separate ourselves from this. For godly sorrow worketh repentance. It worketh remembrance of those things that we have done towards God. And it's going to be unto salvation, providing we hold to his way. But if we allow these other things to become part of our heart, and we're trying to mix all of this in with the ways of God, we're going to have a huge problem because we're going to eventually work our way back to that old way of living. That's the point. We have to separate from that. And see, the hardest part for us is because we have been doing things prior to us learning this truth and prior to us receiving the spirit of our God. We've been used to doing these things, thinking that we were doing these things correctly. But as the word of God shows and sheds light on those things that we have done, which were totally opposite of what we should have been doing. So those, and now that we are learning what those things are, we have to remove those things from our life. Now, again, if you're holding on to these images, my brothers and sisters, just put them away. Because if, if you're having an issue letting go of that, that's going to be a problem. Let's keep one thing in mind. When you refer back to this image, it's not according to the spirit. Always remember that. It's according to the flesh. So if these individuals once was, and you're going back to these images and you're reflecting on uh, uh, different things that you've done and all of these other different things that you could, you could think of, that image is going to cause you a huge problem because you haven't 100% separated yourself from flesh. So if they have already gone on and they once was, then when you're looking at this image, what is it that you get from that? That's the question that I have. What is it that you get from that? What is it that you're missing? Because it has to be more than just what you're grabbing and uh, gravitating to this image. We have to keep our focus, my brothers and sisters. This, this, these little small things could, could give us a, and put us in a bad way with the Most High God. We have to separate from this flesh. It is important that we understand that. 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. For, the God, for godly sorrow worketh repentance, remembrance to salvation, not to be remembered of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. We have to keep that in mind. From here, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 12. And let's hit verse 25. And it's recorded, heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. But however, a good word maketh it glad. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. But however, a good word maketh it glad. From here, let's go to Proverbs chapter 15. Verse 13. And it's recorded. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but however, by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Exactly the point. It's going to break everything about your, your walk. Because you're going to allow all of these things to come in and to interrupt your 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 journey 
is going to cause you to stumble. It is extremely important that we understand what it is, what we need to do, my brothers and sisters. We have to rid ourselves of this because keep one thing in mind. If our objective is to receive eternal life and we got fixed in our head that it's hard for us to uh, turn loose of this loved one or it's hard to turn loose of this friend that has gone on and you're, you're struggling with that. The advice that I have for you, you have to get over that. It is a must that you move forward because everything according whether it was your family member or a friend in your life, I want you to clearly understand what I'm saying. They were a similar to to show you something that we need to pay attention to. Nothing more, nothing less. Nowhere in scripture did God say to fall in love with flesh. We were only placed in it so we can identify sin. That was the purpose. We fell to it. But the issue that we have now is a lot of us have become addicted to it. And that's the problem. God could care less how good your, your wife was or your, your husband or your grandparents, or your parents, or your siblings, or your children, or your nieces and nephews, uncles, aunts. He could care less about that. It's flesh. It's temporary. It's temporary. We must separate from that in order for us to have a spot into the kingdom because we can't carry any of this luggage or any of this baggage in the kingdom with us. Because if you're trying to do that, I can assure you, you will not make it. We have to keep our focus. We have to keep our focus, my brothers and sisters. From here, let's go to Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22. And it's recorded, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But however, a broken spirit dried the bones, exactly the point. We're going to fall victim to death of this world because of holding on to it. That flesh came directly from the earth and back to the earth. It's going to go back. It is going to go back, whether you like that or not. So we need to find a way to maneuver through this journey because it's either you to the left side of the plumb line or you to the right side. God is going to hold you 100% accountable for being a recipient of his spirit and understanding his truths and not being able to turn loose of this flesh. That don't get you into the kingdom because God knows your heart. Christians think that way. Does God know your heart? 100%. But God gives you a way out of that. Separate from it. It's just as simple as that. Separate from it. I've said it once in the, in the uh, other teaching. A lot of us are able to, to, to move past the, uh, the, the death of a loved one or a friend, or even foe. But a lot of us have a hard time in doing such. And we need to find a way to push past that because that can, that can bring your, your walk to a complete halt. You can be stagnant just with dealing with that alone because you're caught and, uh, and hung up on flesh. It is important that we separate from it sorrow from these individuals. We have to remove that. We have to get past that. If we are still grieving over loved ones and friends that has passed on for more than five and six and 10 years, that's something that you've put in your way. That's something that you're doing. And if those images is causing a lot of that problem, you need to rid yourself of that. It's flesh. 
they once was. Let me give you an example. What is it, and here's a question that I pose to you, those that are having this issue. Most of us have calendars hanging in our home. And after every month that expire, what do we do? We remove the month. What is it about these images that you hold on to? Because once they have expired, why don't you remove the image? Because keep one thing in mind, they don't look like that anymore. Keep in mind, these are things that the heathens have done. We were not to fall victim to the practices and to these things that they do. We're to grieve for the loss of our loved one and we're to move forward. The Bible shows us how to do that. So if we've been stagnant on, our, on this journey and we're having an issue or we're having a hard time with that, we need to study longer. We need to dig deeper in the scripture to understand and find out more what is it that we need to do because we have to 100% separate from flesh. 100%. The Bible illustrates a lot of, there is nothing that goes on under the sun that God doesn't have in his word that's a remedy for whatever that issue is that you're having. It's right here in the word of God. But I do know that a lot of us are dealing with some of these issues, in particular this teaching. So it's important that we understand what those things are that we must do my brothers and sisters, to be victorious on this journey. And if we're trying to receive a spot into the kingdom, we must separate from this flesh. Okay? So from here, let's go to Job. Let's go to Job, chapter 17, and verse 7. And it's recorded. Mine understanding also is dim by reason of sorrow, exactly the point. And all my members are as a shadow. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, this is going to put a huge rift in between God and ourselves if we're struggling with these issues. We have to find our way through this. We have to, uh, uh, we have to become strong in our walk. See, the, the Bible illustrates strength and it gives us counsel it gives us advice it gives us truth it gives us life it gives us all of these things that we need on this journey so if we're falling victim to these issues that we're having if in particular what we're speaking of in this teaching that's something that we are doing we need to remove that if that's an issue that needs to be removed you have to move that it's a stumbling block to us and we have to remove that from here, let's go to Second Address. Second Address, chapter 7, and verse 47. And it's recorded. We, 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 we need to keep our focus, my brothers and sisters. Second Address, 7 and 47, and it's recorded. For what profit is it? for men now in this present time to live in heaviness and including after death to look for punishment. That's a question. You see that? That's a question being posed here. What profit is, is it for men now in this present time to live in heaviness, sorrow, grief, and after death to look for punishment? Because that's the only thing that's going to cause that's why it's important for us to understand we need to separate from it. See, you wasn't supposed to fall in love with the flesh, my brothers and sisters. You were to, uh, you were to pay attention to the spirit that was within that vessel. That's what made the vessel the vessel. That's what made the vessel do what it did. It was the spirit in that vessel. So if you want to remember your loved one, remember them in the spirit that they carry. You can place that memory in your heart. But if we're constantly referring back to these images of individuals that once was, whether it's friend or family or foe, that's going to cause a huge problem because your focus is not on the spirit of God, it's on flesh, especially if they've gone on. Why? 
Because when you refer back to this image, what happens? A lot of times, some of us, we, we admire this image and we, we start to remember the things that we did with this individual and we get into our feelings. And we start, you know, we start crying and we start rubbing the face of this image on this, in this frame, which is the stupidest thing you could ever do. Because you're holding to flesh. That has absolutely 100% nothing to do with your spirit. That's a house they used to stay in. And now that they've passed on, they don't even look like that anymore. So the question stands, what is it that you get from this image? What are you seeking after when you go to it? See, so that's the question we have to ask ourselves. What, what is it that you're seeking after? What is it that you're missing? Because if you're seeking back to this flesh, then it's, it's evident that you haven't separated wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly from your flesh. There's some things that you're holding on to, and that's one of them. That could be a detriment to your walk. That's the purpose of the teachings and the uh, the counseling sessions that we can have because we need to make sure and examine ourselves and to see if we're doing things that's hindering our walk. See, all of this comes into play, my brothers and sisters, because we need to find our way through this. It has to, we have to focus on the Most High God in order to be, to be uh successful on this journey. So let's reiterate this text again. And it's recorded. For what profit is it for men now in this time to live in heaviness and after death to look for punishment? Verse 48. O thou Adam, what hast thou done? Question. For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone. But we all that come of thee, exactly the point. We have to be the generation to break this chain because these are things and instances that the heathen were doing in the land. You can go in some of these people's houses and they have images of a loved one or a friend that's been up there for more than 50, 60 years. And my question to anyone that is, that, that, that's, that's doing that, what is the purpose? What is it that you need to refer back to this image that once was? I, I, I'm really not seeing the, the point here when that happens. Are you trying to remember on how they looked? That was a vessel that they, the house they stayed in. Your, your focus should be spirit. See, because if, if we're caught up on the flesh, you're going to fall victim to this world. I can guarantee it. Because you're not doing those things that's required of you. How do I know that? Because you're caught and stuck in this, in this gear. You need to change gears. You need to move forward. You stagnant, you're in neutral. You're not going anywhere. You need to pull that shift out of neutral and get to moving. Understand what we need to do, my brothers and sisters. This, this, this walk is very serious. And it's a, it is a must that we pay attention to what it is that we're doing. Okay, let's reiterate this second text again. Uh, second Adrees chapter 7, verse 48. O thou Adam, what hast thou done? Question, for though it was thou that sinned, thou perfection and beauty art not fallen alone, but however we all that come of thee. Exactly the point. So from here, let's pour some more information. Let's go to Second Adrees chapter 3 and verse 21. And it's recorded. And we'll hit uh, 21 and 22. And it's recorded. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed, and including was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. Exactly the point. We have to focus. Verse 22. Thus infirmity was made permanent. Watch this. For thought and including the law also in the heart of the people with the malignant with the malignant with the malignity of the root for thought so that the good 
departed away, watch this, and the evil abode. Some of us haven't completely separated from this flesh. The malignity, excuse me, my brothers and sisters, let's reiterate that text again. Thus infirmity, those are the issues that we're having in flesh. You can find those infirmities in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 down through 21. Thus infirmity was made permanent for thought and the law also in the heart of the people with the, with the mud. with the malignity of the root for thought so that the good departed away and the evil abode still. From here, let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 7, and let's hit verses 8. Let's hit verses 8 through 14. And it's recorded. But sin taken occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concubines. For without the law, sin was dead. Exactly the point. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived. And I died. Exactly. We have to we have to, in order for us to live, my brothers and sisters, we have to kill off this flesh. Because if we don't kill this flesh off, these, the, our spirit is going to become stillborn. What does that mean? Your spirit is going to become locked into that flesh that you're in. And both you and that spirit is going into the lake of fire. Period. We're to be brought forth. How? According to the spirit. We have to kill off this flesh. And the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me and including by it slew me. Exactly the point. Wherefore the law is holy and including the commandment holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? Question. Here's an answer to it. God forbid, which means no. But however, sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good for thought. That sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Watch this. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal sold under sin. Exactly the point. We have to, we've become used to these vessels. We've become used to the things that, we've, we're, that we're doing in these vessels. We've become used to seeing these other vessels around us. And once that is removed, we have issues with that. That causes a huge problem for us. Let, let, let me give you an example. Let's say, for instance, that, and, and you probably know somebody that has done it, okay? Sometimes a lot of us, we get into our feelings and we go and grab this image and we start to admire it and we start to remember those things that once was with this individual. And a lot of times we go off to ourselves. You could remove yourself from a room that you and others are sitting in and go and you go to be in your feelings, right? So after a while, someone comes in to check on you. You in here crying all over the place, right? Someone comes to check on you. To, they had noticed that you had been in this room for a, a long time and they just wanted to make sure you're all right and they come in to check on you and they ask, are you okay? And your response to them probably would be, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. And they ask, why are you crying? What comes out of your mouth? Oh, I'm not crying. I'm just over it dusting off the table or this and that. Just that quick, you lied. Just that quick. That's why it's important for us to separate from it. Now, that may have been, that lie that you have just told may have 
not been significant, at least in your mind. But a lie is a lie is a lie. And no matter how you cut that or how you look at it, it's sin. Why? It's unrighteous. Always remember that, my brothers and sisters. It's unrighteous. Let's reiterate this last text, Romans 7 and 14. For we know that the law is spirit, spiritual, but however, I am carnal, sold unto sin. From here, let's go back to 2nd Adres. 2nd Adres, chapter 7. And let's hit verse 49. And it's recorded. For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us an immortal time, whereas we have done the works that bring death? Why? Because we hold on the flesh. Instead of separating ourselves and focusing on the Most High God, we have become addicted to the flesh that our spirit is in when in fact we should be killing this flesh off daily because after that flesh has expired there's nothing left but what the spirit you want that spirit to go back to the most high god who gave it because if it don't go back to him and that spirit is locked and sealed in that vessel you have a 100% problem. I want you to clearly understand that. For what profit is it unto us, if providing we promised us an immortal time, whereas we have done the works that bring death? That's one that's allowed. Let's, let's build on that. Romans. Chapter 6, verse 23. Only the first part of that text I, I need, but we'll read the entire verse. For the wages of sin is death, full thought. But however, the gift of Yahweh's eternal life through Yahweh's salvation, the anointed one, our creator. Salvation. From here, let's go back to 2nd Adres, chapter 7, and we'll hit verses 50 down to 52. And it's recorded. And that there is promised us an everlasting hope, whereas ourselves being most wicked are made vain. And that there are laid up for us dwellings of hell and safety, whereas we have lived wickedly. All of this is laid up for us, but we're doing the contrary to achieve it or thinking that we can achieve it through being wicked and through other means of walk. And that the glory of the Most High is kept to defend them which have led a wary life Whereas we have walked in the most wicked ways of all. How does that work, my brothers and sisters? How do we constantly hold to this flesh and thinking that we're doing those things that's pleasing unto God and we're crying over flesh and we're doing things that's contrary to his way? We have to find a way to move past that. Let's, let's, let's take a look at something. Let's pivot for a moment. Let's go to Sirach, to some Ecclesiasticus. Let's go to Sirach, chapter 13, and let's hit verses 16 and 17. And it's recorded. All flesh consorteth according to kind, and a man will cleave to his like. That's a fact. See, we have become so addicted to this flesh, my brothers and sisters. A lot of us, we want to hold to it. Even trying to learn the ways of God, we want to hold to flesh because of the things that 
we enjoy doing, the things that we enjoy eating. All of these things uh, become a problem for us if providing we're holding to this because we're trying to mix two realms. We're constantly trying to bring life into something that is dead. So the question here, or the text here, all flesh can sort of according to kind. Watch this. And a man will cleave to his light. So a lot of us are going to hold to the flesh. A lot of us are going to make that, uh, that right choice and follow the ways of God. It's clear because a lot of us, even here in this teaching, is not going to, to make it into the kingdom. Because we're allowing all of these other things to get in our way. We don't want to stop doing these things that's pleasing to us, that's pleasing unto our flesh. And those are the things that's going to, to come back and, and do you in. Why? Because you're thinking God not having an idea of you doing these things? You can't hide anything from God. It's impossible that you can do that. It's important that we separate from this flesh, my brothers and sisters. How, how is it that we keep going back to these Im images? W what is it about these images that's causing that? Verse 17, what fellowship have the wolf with the lamb? Question. So the sinner with the godly. Absolutely none. Absolutely none. One is carnal and one is of the spirit. From here, let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And let's hit verses 14 through 16. And it's recorded. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what communion hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Are you with me? And what fellowship hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Absolutely nothing. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of Yahweh with idols? Absolutely nothing. For ye are the temple of the living God. For thought, as Yahweh hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them for thought and including I will be their guide and including they shall be my people. Who? The ones that have separated themselves from flesh. We have to separate ourselves from this flesh that we're in, my brothers and sisters. It's important that we understand that. From here, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 27. And it's recorded. An unjust man is as an abomination to the just. Exactly the point. And including he that is upright, he that is righteous, in the way is an abomination to the wicked. It's telling you the same thing. They're both contrary one from the other. So either we're going to be held to the left side or either we're going to hold to the left side of the plumb line or we're going to hold to the right side of the plumb line and follow after Christ. But we have to make that election sure. Whatever that election is, we have to make that election sure. Because if we have been a recipient of the Spirit of God, and we understand his truth and those things and learning those things that's where that's uh, recorded here in his word. We know clearly that the things of the spirit are those things that's of God and the things of the world are those things that's of sin. It's of death. 
So we're going to hold to our like. Remember where we just came from in Sirach. Sirach 13 and 16. All flesh can sort of according to kind, and a man will cleave to his like. Exactly the point. You're going to cleave to whatever side of the plumb line fits you best. See, it's a choice that we have to make, my brothers and sisters. We are clear on that. And we have to make sure that election is, is of God because we can't continually to mix, try to mix carnality with spiritual. It doesn't work that way. You're not going to benefit from that at all. It's clear that we understand that. Let's, let's pivot for a moment. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 8. And let's hit verse 8. And let's record it. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Exactly the point. Why? Because you're constantly after the flesh. You're constantly referring back to it. Verse 5, and we'll read down to 7. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh for thought. But however, they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death for thought. So if we keep referring back to these images, we're carnally minded. That's 100% clear. We're carnal minded. We haven't wholeheartedly separated ourselves from flesh. And that's, that's a huge part of our journey because we have to allow the Holy Spirit to take possession of that vessel. We have to get into our followers position, which is in the back of him. We have to get in our position. For to be cornerly minded is death. Are you with me? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, neither indeed can be. Exactly the point. So we have to make sure of our election. That's clear. We have to make sure of our election. So from here, let's go back to uh, Second Address. Second Address, chapter 7, and verse 53. And it's recorded. And that there should be showed a paradise whose fruit endureth forever, wherein is a security and medicine, since we shall not enter into it. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, we need to remove ourselves. We need to be successful on this journey and hold to the ways of God. And that there should be show a paradise whose fruit endureth forever, wherein is security and medicine, since we shall not enter into it. Why? If we don't enter into that, it's because we're having an issue with flesh. We're holding to it. We're holding to it. Let's 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 go a little closer. Let's go to Revelation. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 22 and verse 2. And it's recorded. In the midst of the street of it, and including on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yield her fruit every month. And including the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Exactly the point. The healing of Israel. 
but we have become stagnant in our journey. We've become stagnant. Let's go to Proverbs. Go back to Proverbs. Chapter 29. And 27. And it says, an unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. But we see that all of these, these, these truths that's recorded here in the word of God that could help us on this journey to be successful on anything that we're struggling with. Our problem is that we constantly hold to these things that it's not going to be beneficial to us. We have to rid ourselves of that, my brothers and sisters. It's important that we understand that. From here, let's go to Ezekiel. Well, let's reiterate Revelation. Let's reiterate that text again. Revelation 22 and verse 2. in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and they yield excuse me, and yield her fruit every month, and including the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So if we understand, my brothers and sisters, that everything that's recorded in the word of God is for our benefit, all we have to do is humble ourselves and learn the ways of God. We have to find a way through what it is that's causing us an issue. See, the word of God is going to shed light on that. And it's going to, it's going to highlight those things that we need to do. So if we're constantly struggling with this loss or, or if we're constantly referring back to these images, that's not going to be good. It is a must that we understand that we that that has to we have to rid ourselves of that. It's just like we were talking earlier about the calendar. If the calendar is outdated, what do you do? You rid yourself of it. It's the same way with an image. If you're having issues with that, I mean, me personally, I just I I, I just don't get the understanding why would I want to have images of loved ones that has already gone on what's the purpose of that? I, I'm, I'm not understanding. I, I see, I get if you have them hanging in your home and they're still with us. But if, if they have gone, if they have since moved on and you're crying over these images or individuals that's been dead for more than two or three years, we we have an issue. That's something that we, we've placed, that's something that's blocking our own path. And we need to we, we need to get that out of the way. So if, if ridding ourselves of that image is going to help us to move past that, then we need to rid ourselves of that image. Because keep in mind, again, they don't look, they don't look like that anymore. That's why I keep referring back to that's a house they used to stay in. Nowhere in Scripture says that it was going to last forever. It's temporary. But we have fallen victim to our own circumstances and we have fallen in love with this flesh and we glorify it. You, you can take a look at that on, on Facebook. It's all over Facebook. You go on Facebook and you just see people, people admiring themselves and taking all these images of themselves and all of this and so forth. It's flesh. And it's going to be a downfall to a lot of us because we glory in it. And that's not what we're supposed to do. We're to separate from that. Okay, it, it, it doesn't matter whether it was mom or dad, whose picture that it is that you're marveling over. You need to wake up and to rid yourself of that image or to just remove it, just put it away. Because if it's causing you these issues, it's causing you to cry and all of these different things and you ain't supposed to be doing that. What is it that you're crying for? I don't get it. That person has passed on and you still crying over an image, a house they used to stay in. 
And every time we do these things, my brothers and sisters, we're trying to breathe life back into something that's dead. That's not coming back. That's done. The appointed time upon that vessel has reached its expiration. Keep that in mind. It's not coming back. So why is it that we're holding to these images? I, I really don't understand that. Why are we holding to it? Why we keep referring back to it? What is it that we're going to get from this image? What is what we're going to? What is it that we're seeking after in this image? It has to be something because it's causing us all of these rifts between us and God. So what is it? We need to examine ourselves. What those things are? How addicted of the flesh have we become? Are we so addicted to the flesh that we can't separate from it and become a victim? Uh, and a stumbling block to our own walk. We have to we have to move past that. We have to move past that because after death, there is nothing left but the spirit. So we we need to take it as such because we were only placed in it so we can identify sin. We wasn't to hold to it. No one in scripture tells you that. So from here, let's go to Ezekiel and let's pull some information. Ezekiel chapter 47, and let's hit verse 12. And it's recorded. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on the that side, shall grow all trees for meat, for knowledge, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his month, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, exactly the point, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, for knowledge, and including the leaf thereof for the medicine. The word of God heals us from all of these ailments but we have to hold to his way in order for these things to be administered. See, if we're not going to add these things to our life, my brothers and sisters, we're wasting time. If we're going to constantly seek after this loved one and continually do those things that's of the world, you're going to fall victim to this side of the, the plumb line. I can assure it because you haven't kept your focus. We need to keep our focus on what it is that we're doing. Okay? So, so let's go back to Second Adres. Second Adres, chapter 7. And we're going to hit verses 54 and 55. And it's recorded. For we have walked in unpleasant places, and that the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness those of us that are holding to the side of the, the left side of the plumb line we have to wake up my brothers and sisters we have to wake from this sleep that we're in and the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars, whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. From here, let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 13. And we want to hit verses 43. And it's recorded. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let them hear. We have to allow the dead to be buried, my brothers and sisters. We can't continue to move forward on this journey and being stagnant in this position. We can't become stagnant. Let's go back to Second Adres, chapter 7, verse 56. And it's recorded. For while we live and committed iniquity, 
we consider not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. We haven't even considered that. Why? Because we think that we could do these things and still worship God when in fact we're worshiping flesh. We're seeking after fleshly things. If we're constantly seeking after these things, my brothers and sisters, the lake of fire is going to be our outcome. We clearly don't want our spirit to become stillborn, to be trapped in this body. We don't want that. Let me show you something. Let's, let's pivot for a moment. Let's go somewhere. Let's go to Judith. I want to show you something there in Judith. We're going to bring the lake of fire a little closer. Let's go to Judith chapter 16, and we're going to hit verse 17. Pull some information. I want to highlight that. And it's recorded. Woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred. The Creator, yet Almighty, will take vengeance on them in the day of judgment and putting fire, watch this, and worms in their flesh for thought. And including, they shall fill them and weep forever. Why? Because we're holding to flesh. Why do we keep holding to it? What is it that we're going to benefit from it? When we refer back to that image, what is it that we benefit from when we do that? From here, let's go to Job. Job chapter 14 and verse 22. And it's recorded. But however, flesh upon him shall have pain and his soul within him shall mourn. Why? Because we've hold on to the left side of the plumb line. We're holding on to fleshly things. We keep doing these things that's contrary to our walk, to our journey. From here, let's go to Isaiah. Pull some information. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 24. And it's recorded. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched for thought. And including, they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So if we understand that, why do we constantly hold to it? Why do we constantly hold to it, my brothers and sisters? We need to understand those things that's recorded in the word of God and apply them to our life. A lot of times these things are a little tough on us, but God is not looking at that. He could care less about how tough things are on you. Why? Because you put yourself in that position. He told you to separate from it. That's the point. So either we're going to be a uh, fall victim to the left side of the plumb line because of flesh or we're going to keep our focus on the spirit of God and allow him to lead us unto the kingdom. You may hear a lot of people say that they can't get over this and they can't get over that. And it's hard for them to do this and it's hard for them to do that. And I totally get it. But you can't have those issues, my brothers and sisters, and try to bring that with you into the kingdom. A lot of Christians, in a heartbeat, they will say, well, God knows my heart. Yeah, he knows your heart. He knows it's wicked and it's crooked and it's, 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 it's all of that. Because anything that we cause in our lives, my brothers and sisters, that's against God is the things that we're doing. It's something that we're doing that we need to 
correct, we need to examine ourselves. See, we need to, we, we, we don't just need to examine ourselves today and we we done. That has to be constant, just like our walk. Why? Because it's those little small things that can get us caught up. Those little bitty little small things that can get us to, uh, get us caught up. And we can't afford that. We have come too far on this journey to turn back, my brothers and sisters. The objective is to encourage one another. The objective is to help one another and to uh, 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 teach one another. We have to we have to be on the same page. We have to be in the same mindset. We can't fall victim to this world. We have to help one another up and to get past what it is that we're experiencing. Keep in mind, we're all one body. We're all one body. So if the fingers have an issue, that whole body attends to the finger. We have to all be collectively going in the same direction in order to be a strength and a help to one another. Because if we go contrary to that, then we're going to be all over the place. So we have to, it's important that we understand this flesh has to die daily. We have to get rid of it. We have to get it, rid ourselves of it, my brothers and sisters. We have to kill it off. We have to put it to death. It's important that we understand that because we don't want to become a victim of our own circumstance. Because everything's recorded here in the Word of God. It's right here. So from here, let's go to Sirach, to some Ecclesiasticus. Sirach chapter 7. And that's at verse 17. And it's recorded. Humble thyself greatly for the vengeance of the ungodly is fire and including worms. That's not good. We don't want that. From here, let's go to Mark and pull some information. Mark chapter 9, verse 44, and we'll go through uh, 48. And it's recorded, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two paths to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Verse 46 where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if providing thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh with one understanding than having two understandings and to be cast into hell fire. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. We have to Understand, my brothers and sisters, this is our outcome, providing we hold to flesh. We have to rid ourselves of that. Uh, uh, when, we, when we grab these images, my brothers and sisters, and we start to reflect back on it, we're doing things that's, that's, <laughs> that's, not of the most high God. Let, let, let's go somewhere. Let's go to Luke. Let's pull some information from Luke. Luke chapter 17. And we're going to hear right here at verse 32. And it's not even a question. Watch this. Remember Lot's wife. That's not even a question. If it was a question, remember Lot's wife? But this is a full stop at the end of this statement. Remember Lot's wife. 
telling you to remember something. Let's 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 go to Genesis. Pour some affirmation. Genesis 19, and let's hit verse 17, I believe it is. And it's recorded. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life, for thought. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. For thought, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Watch this, let's hit verse 26. But however, his wife looked back from behind him, and including she became a pillar of salt. Why? She kept looking back. She kept looking back. And it caused a huge problem. She died as a result of that. Why? She looked back. But she was a memorial, too, to us of what not to do. But a lot of us do it. And it's going to cause us a problem if we don't awake from that. I get the fact that, you know, we have had these relationships with our spouses, those that have lost their spouse, their wife or their husbands or their parents or grandparents and friends alike. And I get it. But my brothers and sisters, we have to push past that. We have to push past that because, again, we all grieve differently. But when we start to refer back to these images, keep one thing in mind. The spirit that dwelled in that image is no longer there. So it referenced now as a house they used to stay in. So when we're reflecting back to that image because we're missing these individuals, what is it that you're missing about this image? Because your focus should have been on the spirit in that individual. Remembering that spirit, whether it had been a loving spirit or a kind spirit, what kind of spirit was it? But we keep referring back to the image. So if we're referring back to the image of something that once was, then it's clear we're missing something according to the flesh. We're trying to bring something back because that's not according to the spirit. That's according to flesh right there. That has absolutely 100% nothing to do with spirit that causes you to go back and look at that. You have to separate yourself from that, my brothers and sisters. It's important that we understand that. Let's go somewhere. Let's go. Let's go back to Luke. Uh, let's go to Luke chapter 9 and verse 60. Better yet, let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 8. In verse 22. And it's recorded. But your house shall I said unto them, Follow me for thought, and let the dead bury the dead. See, if you're dealing with fleshly things and you're referring back to images as such, then your walk is that which is carnal. You haven't wholeheartedly separated yourself from this flesh. Because again, I've said it in that last teaching. If you're having an issue turning loose the flesh of a loved one that has passed on, I could only imagine the struggles that you're having within yourself with the flesh that you're in. Let me show you something. You're no different than this guy. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 14, let's hit verse 15. And it says, For a father afflicted with untimely mourning when he hath made an image of his child, soon taken away. Now honor him as a God, which was then a dead man, and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. So how often... Do you refer back to the image? Do you go out to a grave site? 
All of these things are according to the flesh. You're no different than this guy. I want you to keep that in mind. We have to remove ourselves from that because that's going to cause us a riff. And again, we, we start to cry over these images and we, <laughs> we, we start to say things that we shouldn't. You know, people come check on us. We're in there crying. Are you crying? No, I'm not crying. And just that, that quick, you, you, you told this lie. Let, let me show you something. It may not be in, you know, because a lot of people deem something that that minute to be not even worthy to uh, uh, to speak about, but I, I beg to differ. I want to show you something. Just that one little lie. Let's go to First John chapter 5. Let's say verse 17. This is the only part of that text I need. All unrighteousness is sin. I don't care how you look at that. All unrighteousness is sin. See, there's no such thing as a little lie. Either you lied or, or, or you didn't. There's no such thing as a little theft. Either you stole or you didn't. See, a lot of people like to, they like to weigh that in, in, in a way that it really means nothing if it wasn't a lie. I'll give you an example of that. Let's say you was, in a, you was at work, right? And you were in an area and you were needing a quarter to get you a bag of chips out of your, out of your vending machine, right? And you saw a quarter on the desk. No one else was around but you. And you took the quarter. Okay. And then you got somebody that had just robbed the bank for $1.6 million. Here's my question to you. What's the difference between the quarter you took and the guy that robbed the bank for the $1.6 million? There ain't no difference. It's both sin. It's both theft. I don't care how you look at that. The Most High God don't determine whether you stole a quarter as a result of somebody else stealing a great number of money. That, that has nothing to do with nothing. It's sin. Sin is sin is sin is sin. It's unrighteousness. You see that? All unrighteousness is sin. So there's no such thing as a little lie. See, but a lot of us want to hold to it. So that little lie can get you a lot of fire. Keep that in mind. It is a must, my brothers and sisters, that we separate from flesh. It is extremely a must that we understand these things. Let, let, let's see. Let, let's see something. Let's, let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation. Chapter 21 and verse 8. And it's recorded. But however, the fearful and including unbelieving and the abominable and including murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all, watch this, liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and included in brimstone, which is the second death. We need to keep our focus. Why have I been hyping so much, my brothers and sisters, on these images of individuals that once was? Because, my brothers and sisters, it, 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 it can bring a detriment to your walk. Let me give you an example of something, okay? And I want you to chew on this for a while. We find it in Scripture that God tells us to separate ourselves from this flesh. We have a lot of our brothers and sisters and family and friends that are still caught up in these church buildings. And we try to share truth with them. And knowing that they don't want to have anything of it, then we don't force it upon them. So we separate from them. And doing such, they have persecuted us. They have done all of these things just because we're following truth. 
But on the other hand, we refer back to the images of those that have passed on. And we're holding on to these images as if they're going to come back one day for some reason or another. And we place this stumbling block in our path. What we have to realize, my brothers and sisters, is this. That when we do these things, we're, we're committing the act of liberty. We're picking and choosing. How is it that we can separate from those that are caught into the well, but we keep referring back to the image of those that have passed on? What we don't realize is the ones that's caught up in the well are similar to, to the ones that have passed on. That's the point. So how is it that you keep referring back to those that have passed on as opposed to the ones that's up in these, these church buildings? Here's my question to you. What's the difference between the two? Because if you're looking for a difference, there is none. They're both dead. Both of them. So how is it that you keep referring back to the dead? And you're separated from them. I don't get that. How do you keep referring back to those that have already passed on because they were close to you, but you separated from the ones that was in the church buildings? Both of the individuals are, are dead. Let me give you a silhouette picture of that. Let's go to James. James chapter 2, and right here at verse 26. This is the only part of that text I need. For as the body without the spirit is dead, both parties are without the spirit. So how is it that you pick and choose for one that you want to hold to? I know you have to see that. The ones that's in the building are similar to, to the ones that have passed on. We have to learn from that. Because they're both without the spirit. But we have made this choice in our own head that we're going to hold to this wife that once was and we just can't for some odd reason turn her loose. Well, here's what I need to tell you, my brothers and sisters. We need to find a, you need to find a way to turn her loose. If those of them missing their wife that has passed on or their husbands or any of their loved ones that have passed on, you had best find a way to remove that from your path because that was that once was that can that can cause you a riff that can cause you your 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 life on this journey because what should be in your heart are those things that's required of us and that's recorded here in the word of God so if you're going to hold to flesh all of these verses that we came up with in this teaching is going to be your your future Providing you hold to the ways of flesh. We have to be able to see these things. We can't continue to go down this path, my brothers and sisters, and 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 continually do those things that's 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 of the world and thinking we can get into the kingdom. It doesn't work like that. From here, let's go, let's go somewhere. Let's go to second address. Second address, chapter 8, verse 52. And we'll read on down to 54. And it's recorded. For unto you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. Plenteous, plentiness is made ready. A city, a tribe, a nation is built. And rest is allowed, yea, perfect goodness and including wisdom. The root of evil is sealed up from you, weakness and including the moth is hid from you. And corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. Sorrows are past and in the, time, in the end is showed the treasure of immortality. 
providing we separate ourselves from this flesh? How is it that we're going to hold to it? How can you hold to it and think that you are wholeheartedly worshiping God? We have to change the way we think, my brothers and sisters. It's all in our mind. We have to change that. If you want to remember your loved ones, remember them in your heart. Remember that spirit that they carry. What type of spirit was it? Was it a loving spirit? Was it a caring spirit? Remember them in your heart. But you keep referring back to an image. You are referring back to flesh. I don't care how you look at that. I don't care how you look at that. It is a must that we understand what we need to understand, my brothers and sisters. We need to clearly understand these things. From here, let's go to Ecclesiastes as we wind down this teaching. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 10. And it's recorded. Therefore, remove sorrow from thine heart and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. It's worthless. Are you with me? From here, let's go to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians, chapter 7. We're going to hear right here at verse 1. And it's recorded. Having therefore for this reason these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the desire of Yahweh. That needs to be our focus. That needs to be our focus. Are you with me? From here, let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. And it's recorded. Flee also youthful lusts, but however follow righteousness, faith, charity, love, promise, peace with them that call on the Creator out of a pure heart. So how is it that you can call on your Yahweh out of a pure heart if in fact, if you're holding to the ways of the world, if you're reflecting back on flesh, how is that? From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7 and 11. Oh, I'm sorry. Psalm 97 through 11. And it's recorded, For we are con consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten for thought, and if providing, if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, which is eighty, yet is their strength labor and sorrow for thought, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy desire, so is thy wrath. Exactly the point. We need to understand what it is that we need to do, my brothers and sisters. We have to remember those things that's required of us. We have to continually hold to the ways of God, because if we don't, it's going to cause us a huge problem as we move forward on this journey. And if it causes us a problem, 
then we're going to be apt to fall victim to this world because of something that we wanted to hold to. So from here, let's go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 18. And it's recorded. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth in knowledge increaseth in sorrow. Exactly the point. Because we need to understand, my brothers and sisters, a lot of these things that we have become used to and become addicted to in this flesh, we don't want to turn loose. And it's a must that we rid ourselves of them because we can't carry anything carnal into the spiritual realm. Whether it be things of this world or whether it be even a thought of a loved one or friend. None of that is remembered. Keep that in mind. All of the former things have passed away. We can't, for, we can't forget that. We cannot forget that. From here, let's go to Sirach. Sirach the Psalm, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, and verse 12. And it's recorded. He that is not wise will not be taught, but however, there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. Exactly the point. Because we learn in the truth of God's word and the ways of God and those things that we have to rid ourselves of. All of these things are going to become bitter. The word is going to become bitter in your mouth. Why? Because we have to follow the ways of God. We have to be purged of all of this infirmity that we have in us. This flesh has to 100% be put to death. And separated from this flesh. Or separated from this spirit. It is important that we, we understand that we have to place ourselves and get in our position, which is the follower's position, and allow the Spirit of God to rule the vessel. But a lot of us want to take back the vessel, and we want to do those things that we want and that we choose to do. So if you're doing that, you're going to cause a problem on this journey, my brothers and sisters. You're going to cause a huge problem. From here, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 2 chapter 2 and 23 and it's recorded for all his days are sorrows and his tra uh, travail, grief, for thought. Yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. This is also vanity. We have to rid ourselves of this sorrow. We have to rid ourselves of this flesh. We have to constantly focus on the Most High God and to continually keep our focus. My brothers and sisters, I want to pull this last text. And it's found right here. In Luke, Luke chapter 14 and verse 26. And I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> we have to remove ourselves from these things that we're doing that's causing our problem that's causing us to stumble no matter how painful that might be we have to keep moving forward we have to continually hold to the ways of God keep that in mind and wholeheartedly 100% separate from this flesh Luke chapter 14 verse 26 and it's recorded if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children, and including brethren, and including sisters, yea, and including his own life. Also, he cannot be my disciple. So my brothers and sisters, 
My prayer is that this teaching edifies you and it helps you on your journey. Those of us that are struggling with uh, these images, we have to hold to the ways of God. We have to remove those things from us, my brothers and sisters, and focus on the spirit of our God. We have to focus on those things that are required of us. We have to confess these sins that we have committed constantly to our God, my brothers and sisters. We have to become in his image because if we keep referring back to these things that's worldly, that's going to cause a huge problem for us on this journey. So my brothers and sisters, keep your focus. Always maintain a particular focus as we're going through scripture. And as you're doing your independent study or if you're just seeking after the truth, always maintain a particular focus. Always examine yourself to make sure, my brothers and sisters, that we're not doing those things that's not pleasing to God. We have to always check ourselves. We have to always be mindful to do these things and constant at it. We has to, it has to become habit with us because we have to rid ourselves of all of these earthly things that have to go, okay? We don't want to uh, have this separation between us and our God. We need to draw closer to the Most High God. These teachings and the things that you're doing and adding what you're learning from Scripture to your life, these things are places us not only in His image, but it's drawing us a lot closer. But we have to hold to his ways, my brothers and sisters. We have to hold to his ways. Keep that in mind. So as always, till the ground from which you've come. Receive your own word daily. And never, my brothers and sisters, never let anyone pull you away from what you know to be true in God's word. So until we meet again, I say to each and every last one of you, Shalom.